here at World Dairy Expo. I just attended a media breakfast sponsored by Al Pharma with Pat Hoffman here from the University of Wisconsin talking about precision feeding of dairy heifer, replacement dairy heifers and really how that, the research that's been done in that and what, what you found out. So really, uh, Pat, why don't you tell us first, what was some of the presentation, the information that you gave for the media here? Well, there's a lot, been a lot of research work around the country, not just at the University of Wisconsin, but other universities too, on trying to capture some uh, management practices that improve feed efficiency and reduce costs for dairy replace, uh, for dairy replacement heifers. And precision feeding is one of those practices that that seems to be really working out to have some very uh, distinct and and potential benefits for our dairy producers and custom heifer growers around the country. Well, how much can you reduce feed without losing milk production? Well, really our data suggests that we can reduce uh, dry matter intakes to heifers. Uh, in, you know, we'll just be uh, straightforward about it, maybe two to three pounds a day. Um, our recent study at the University of Wisconsin, we measured carryover effects. Uh, we really haven't seen a carryover effect on uh, lactation and dry matter intake or milk production, uh, fat or protein yield or reproductive performance. So I think what we're trying to accomplish with uh, precision feeding is uh, just these subtle limitations of dry matter, trying to save a few cents of feed costs, uh, trying to reduce manure excretion uh, without changing the the well-being or uh, productive performance of the animal. Well, when you're talking about reducing feed costs, that, that of course is a savings for the producer, but you're also talking about environmental benefits here, right? Well, the reduction in uh, manure excretion is, is even more dramatic probably than anything else. It, it, it winds up to be, you know, on a larger operation, literally tons of manure reduced in handling. And, you know, that's something that our modern dairy producer just uh, faces on a daily basis. So um, we think that's one of the real important aspects of precision feeding is this uh, environmental aspect to it. When you reduce the feed, the amount of feed that's fed, is there anything that you have to uh, increase or make sure that they're still getting enough of? Well, precision feeding means that you're going to feed precisely the nutrients that they need. Uh, you're maybe not going to feed them all they want to eat, um, close to it, but not all. And so you need to make sure that they're getting the proper grams or pounds of protein a day, minerals a day, vitamins a day. But that's really easily accomplished with diet formulation, uh, making those diets a little bit more nutrient dense and then just reducing the amount a little bit. So that's all part of it. A lot of nutrition consultants here today uh, that you know, work with those kind of systems and are well equipped to, to handle those dietary formulations. So really, is the feed then more concentrated? The feed is slightly more concentrated. It has a little more protein in it, a little more calories in it. And so what, what we're trying to do is to make that feed you know, be utilized as efficiently as possible. Because you were talking about that, that you're feeding less, but it still had the same amount of calories? Is that what I got there? Uh, it, it actually has more calories as far as density, but the animal eats the same amount of calories per day or the same grams of protein a day. And you do that by, by basically uh, formulating both the level that you feed and the concentration that's in that food. So, well, what were the conclusions that you came up with as far as the research is concerned? Well, we can't really see any carryover effects of limit feeding as long as it's done within the scope of precision feeding. And that's, you know, you know, to improve feed efficiency, reduce manure excretion without affecting the animal's performance or well-being. Uh, we don't want that changed. And as long as we precision feed, you know, in a very subtle, prescribed way, uh, we really haven't seen any major negative effects on the animal, and in many cases, a, a number of very positive effects that we're looking for in modern agriculture. Well, and the bottom line positive effect is money saving, right? The bottom line positive mm -hmm. effect is uh, environmental saving and cost saving, yes. All right, very good. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate talking to you today. I appreciate getting the information. If grower, uh, this is going to be published, this data is going to be published so that uh, producers can see it? I think all of this data is already published, so it's uh, available you know, through extension services around the country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here from World Dairy Expo, I'm Cindy Zimmerman.
here at World Dairy Expo, I'm speaking with Lance Fox with uh, Alpharma, and we just had a media breakfast here that Alpharma sponsored that uh, featured some results of research on precision feeding. Now, Lance, why did you choose to have uh, um, this, this particular presentation here for a media breakfast? Alpharma has historically been active in the dairy heifer industry, and a couple of years ago we recognized uh, Pat's work in that realm and uh, approached Pat about some of his work and asked him if he would be willing to come in and address the audience and bring us up to speed on some of the new research. Uh, the research does date back, but Pat's been doing some recent research, and we essentially wanted the audience to, to get that updated research as it comes into the public domain here in the next few weeks and uh, promote the dairy heifer industry. Well, of course, saving money and feed costs is, is very important for That's producers. Right. So it was good to get that kind of research information out. But how is Alpharma helping in that regard? Yeah, because we recognize the University of Wisconsin's outstanding work in the dairy industry, and of course Pat's work specifically with dairy heifers, uh, we actually approached Pat. Uh, he had an idea, and it was to repeat some of the earlier work he did a few years ago. And in this new study, he wanted to look at applying an ionophore to the diet and see if we could maybe tweak that diet back a little bit more, replace some of that diet, and certainly have an economic advantage uh, in that animal uh, and to the producer, of course. And so we want to keep the same performance, you know, growth, lactation performance once they become lactating animals, and yet save that producer some money. And so it just happened to be that timing was everything, as they say and El Pharma was willing to offer some funds to the University of Wisconsin to do some of this research, and that's how that all came about. Mm -hmm. And now the, the product, the ionophore that you're talking mm -hmm. about is, uh, is this, Bovitech. Yeah, exactly. Bovitech, so tell me about Bovitech. Yeah, Bovitech is an ionophore. There are several out on the market. Bovitech has been in the industry for a number of years. Uh, in young cattle, we use it as an anticoccidial. As the animal get older, we convert that to feed efficiency and rate of gain. And so we're basically allowing these animals to better utilize their forages, their feed, and to maximize their performance. Because ultimately, we want to get them into the lactating string, making milk, and give that payback to that producer. What? What? Then? So you can the, using this ionophore, you can decrease the amount of feed, mm -hmm. increase the feed efficiency. So sure. what's the return on investment for a producer? Yeah, as an example here, if we take a pound of corn as an example, and if that's running six to eight cents per pound, the ionophore at about 300 milligrams per head per day is three cents per head per day. And so you've got a nice return on investment when you can replace a pound of that corn in the diet. And that's essentially what all the data suggests historically, and that's well true in some of this new research. So pretty nice return, over two to one. That sounds pretty good. Well, now Lance here at World Dairy Expo, what else is Al Pharma doing? Um, meeting with the producers here at World Dairy Expo. Yeah, this, this is a historical time of year. Of course, the weather outside this week has been beautiful here in Madison, but we have a lot of the fluctuations in temperature this time of year. And one of the products that we tend to see a lot more use of is Oreo S700. And it's used for these wild weather uh, swings in dairy heifers where we can't control mother nature and respiratory disease is a little more prominent. And so Oreo S700 has been kind of our key message this fall to uh, make sure people are using it appropriately, you know, setting up in advance of that uh, known weather fluctuation and see if we can stop some of that BRD from occurring. Right, very good. Thank you very much here at World Dairy Expo. I'm Cindy Zimmerman.